The Minister, thanks so much for your time. I mean, a lot of smiles here at the, uh, at the Durban ICC. Uh, quite a lot of, um, you know, people are quite positive on how this, uh, this, this Ndaba is going so far. What are your impressions? Uh, uh, Fifi, probably the biggest smile of them all is my smile. <laughs> it's, it's, it's a really great Ndaba. This is uh, the 2018 Indaba, the biggest and the most spectacular Indaba that we've yet had, with the biggest numbers of buyers and exhibitors from 20, exhibitors from 22 African countries are here. Buyers, there are no less than 1,470 buyers, sorry, 1,740 buyers that are here at Indaba, with 1,120 exhibitors. So it's big, it's a diversity of products, it's vibey, it's exciting, and people are doing business as we speak. It's, it's barely begun and people are doing business. I mean, what is quite vibey and exciting is the shirt that you're wearing uh, today, Minister. I imagine that's got to do with the uh, centenary uh, celebrations of the uh, late president of South Africa, Nelson Mandela, that are uh, underway or preparing to be underway all over. Well, yes, Fifi. I mean, this is a, a special in Daba this year, 2018, the year in which Nelson Mandela would have turned 100 years old and the, our whole country is celebrating him and what he's done for our country and what he's done for the world. This shirt is the typical shirt that Nelson Mandela used to wear and he popularized it and now so many people are in our country are wearing it. Um, Nelson Mandela does not belong to South Africa. I mean, we, he is South African. He helped us get over apartheid and free ourselves from the apartheid system. He reconciled the people of South Africa, but he's an iconic figure all over the world. So that makes this year something very special. Um, and I think it, it's, it's, it's being felt by everybody. And what is even more uh, special and quite exciting about this Africa Travel in Daba is the announcement that we had from British Airways earlier to yes. introduce a direct route from Heathrow to Durban. What did you make of that? Well, firstly, I mean, we, we have not only a great country to sell to the world, we have a great continent to sell to the world. And I think that's what we're trying to do but you can market it, you can do all of the things to make the visitor experience a, a really pleasant visitor experience, and it always is. But at the end of the day, we've got to make it easier for people to get here. Uh, Durban is a fantastic city. Uh, it's a, an attraction in its own right. It's got a beautiful climate, fantastic beaches, and so much, uh, I should say, maybe one of the best things about Durban is its cultural diversity, and its friendly people, and great cuisine. But you have to make it easier for people to travel to your country and to your cities. So this direct flight from, uh, that uh, was announced today, British Airways from London straight to Durban, is going to make a huge difference to the numbers of people who will choose to visit Durban. Of course, as they visit Durban, they visit other places as well. But I think, uh, you know, uh, people do need choices. We need to do whatever we can to make it easier for people to travel to South Africa. And this is a great step ahead. And of course, the route also brings with it potential uh, business opportunities. The president has said that he's looking to shore up some $100 billion in investors or in investment from, uh, from the rest of the world. I mean, to what degree is the tourism sector positioning itself to contribute towards that? In a very big way. I mean, uh, the president also said during his State of the Nation address that uh, the tourism sector is one of our fastest growing sectors. Um, so it's, it's actually outperforming other sectors in our economy. Actually, that's the story of Africa as a whole, where tur tourism is outperforming other sectors. So this $100 billion of investment that could flow into South Africa, and we believe will flow into South Africa, a chunk of it, of course, will go towards tourism because people see the incredible opportunities in tourism and they can already see the growth in tourism in South Africa and, and our neighboring countries, I should say. By the way, just talking about our neighboring countries, it's, it's a, you know, it just adds to the package. People do come to South Africa, but they can go to Namibia as well. They can go to Zimbabwe and see the Victoria Falls. So I think we, you know, we, we, um, we ride on each other's backs, if you like. You know, people who come to South Africa, there's opportunity to go to Swaziland, Lesotho, Mozambique. People wanting to go to Mozambique and invariably come to South Africa as well. So as a, as a, as a regional package, it is a truly amazing regional package. But of course, Minister, there are constraints, particularly yep. with traveling on the continent. I mean, for many countries, a direct route is not even yes. there. What, what conversations are happening behind the scenes between uh, African governments to make sure that the ease of travel is, is improved? 
it's an ongoing conversation and dialogue. It's, you know, it's, it's being addressed bit by bit, but painfully slowly. So it's a lot easier to fly from Europe or even the USA uh, or from uh, uh, Dubai for that matter to many of our African destinations and many of our African co countries. But to fly from one country to another country becomes a very difficult exercise. We simply don't have any, uh, enough direct routes from country to country. It's not that easy to achieve because often it's, it's related to the profitability of the route. Uh, but what we are doing as, as African ministers is trying to open the skies, open the airways, make it more competitive and to allow not only our own national carriers to do those, those uh, air links from country to country, but allow other competitive airlines to do it as well. Air Ethiopia has been an incredible growth story and so they've managed to, to link African countries more than a lot of uh, other airlines have managed to do so, but it is a challenge. And it's a challenge that we're acutely aware of because we want to see more intra-African travel. For sure. And uh, so I will be going to Nigeria in uh, a month from now uh, for a very important conference in Nigeria. But I can't fly directly from Johannesburg to Abuja. I have to do it, you know, through some other country. If not, you're lucky if you can do it with just one stop. Sometimes it means two stops before you get to where you want to get to. Um, no easy answer to that one, but we are very acutely aware of it. And uh, Minister, I mean, the global economy is in a much better position this year. A lot of people, particularly from uh, the developed countries, are in a much better position also to spend and to travel uh, towards uh, or to countries like Africa or like yes. uh, continents like Africa, countries like South Africa. How are we as South Africa positioning ourselves to make sure that we get some of that increase in global spend? Yes, uh, well, uh, let's start off with the numbers of people traveling uh, internationally. 2017 saw over 1.2 billion people travel internationally, and, and that's a huge number of people. We're not getting our full share, not far from it, by the way. We're getting about 5% of, of international travelers coming to Africa, to the African continent. Having said that, you know, our growth has been quite impressive over the last few years. We need to do, do more to get a greater share of this international travel. And uh, basically the package, and that applies to all countries, is um, make sure that your, your product is good and forever improve your product. Secondly, make sure that the experience is a good time, from, is, a, is a good one, from the moment of arrival to the moment of departure. Thirdly, market that product and market it well across the world. You're helping us market our product because we have a fantastic product in South Africa. And then fourthly, make it easier for people to travel to your country. So we're working on these things simultaneously to get a greater share of that big international market. I can just say that uh, the reason that people, so many people come to South Africa is because it's, it's more than one experience that we offer. It's a multiplicity of experiences. People come here for wildlife, but they do the city experience as well. Uh, there, there are beaches. We have 3,000 kilometers of coastline. So in a way, it's, it's, it's a, world in, a whole world in one country. Many, many experiences. Adventure tourism is becoming increasingly popular. International travelers, by the way, more and more, are looking for truly authentic experiences. So they don't just want to see the impressive places, but they want to touch it and feel it and, and feel the soul of a nation. And so we, we really have to work on that one. But we can say with, uh, uh, with absolute pride and without any fear of contradiction that almost everyone who visits South Africa goes back wanting to come back.